Okay, so far, we saw Korea's trade performance and also major partners you know, of Korea's trade. Uh, trade. And, and next, uh, policy issues. So evolution of Korea's trade policy. One page, you know, many, many years. But uh, anyway, uh, when uh, former President Park Jong-hee become the president, he has to think about the, uh, changing the South Korea, how we transform South, Co South Korea so that we can get out of the po poverty. We only have a people, not much natural resources, not much industrial base. So what he does was he asked all the people, whole population, including companies and even individuals, try to export anything, hmm? export anything. Then we will help you. Okay, in terms of, uh, you know, providing some uh, financial credits and some facilities. Even we can uh, hear you about the bottlenecks of your expert performance. We want to, you know, recruit, uh, call upon the cabinet meetings. We want to resolve it. And we change the exchange rate uh, so that you can export uh, better. So anyway, every, you know, government policy is focusing on how to promote exports because we have to earn money and using this money we can buy some you know capital goods uh, things like that so at that time import is is virtually banned unless you show the evidence we need this so that we can make some goods and export for the export purposes you can import one episode is this in other words don't spend dollar on your consumption good. So my generation, my father's generation, they never you know, imagine you spend money on imported goods. Right? So I was a college student uh, four decades, you know, I was a uh, uh, freshman uh, in 1971. My college, College of Commerce, Seoul National University is now far away from here. But my college, at that time, Seoul National University, each college is located in different locations. So my college of commerce was very close to Korea University. So I have to go there. But anyway, at that time, as usual, you smoke cigarettes. But 1970s, Korean cigarettes are very, very poor. So we have to buy, you know, smuggled uh, American cigarettes. We have a special police. They can detect you even 10 meters away by looking at the, you know, the smoke, uh, how smokes are moving. Korean cigarettes are so poor, if you smoke on the street, smoke have no pattern, you know, going like this. But American cigarettes are moving smoothly. So you, 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 you know, police catch you, then you have to pay fine. Hmm? That means everybody is concerned about not consuming you know, foreign uh, goods by paying a dollar. So we are only concentrating on uh, exporting. So that's the 10-year period. We are exporting what? Dress shirts, shoes, hats, very labor-intensive uh, items because we, we have no uh, technology. And uh, actually, first item we export uh, you know, formally to the United States I can ask you, but this is a wig. You know the wig, the hair, made of real hair, not artificial hair. Hmm? So mothers, uh, sisters, you know, daughters, they cut their hair and sell to the street uh, buyers, and then collect hair and they make a wig and then export to the United States. Our wig manufacturing companies are still dominant uh, player in the world, but size. It's very small compared to automobile or shipbuilding, you know, those kind of things. But still, we are doing it, not in Korea, but in Indonesia and other places. But anyway, we call export promotion period. These policies uh, by experts are called uh, export promotion, but it's a neutral policy. What do you mean by neutral? We are not selecting specific sectors. We are promoting every possible export. We are not, you know, subsidizing any special uh, sectors. We are you know, promoting overall exports, regardless of your sectors you are in. 
So that's the period. We joined the GET in 1967. If you join the GET, you have to fulfill a lot of responsibilities, but you are so poor, we join the GET without much difficulties. Because you, know, you are developing countries, okay, you can, we are welcome you, you know? welcome you. So we, we joined the GET without much you know, market opening. But anyway, that's the period. And uh, President Park jong hee was considering if you export wigs or, or you know, dress shirts, shoes, forever, how can we make our economic development? So he changed his mind out of export promotion to heavy and chemical industrial promotion, which was a little bit uh, excessive kind of a vision because we are poor still. And if you promote this industry, you, ha you have to have money. But we, we don't have money. We have to borrow money from outside. But Korea was not known. You know? Korean companies are not known. So nobody is lending the money. But uh, we have a very dynamic entrepreneurs, like a founder of Samsung, founder of Hyundai. You, see, you, know, it's, you cannot imagine how actively uh, they uh, go abroad and try to borrow money. So long story, but another 10 years, we heavily pour money into uh, heavy industries. For example, shipbuilding, machine, steel, electronics, hmm? and uh, chemical products. We don't produce oil, but we buy oil and make products out of oil. Okay? So that's the kind of heavy industry project. And uh, international organizations like uh, World Bank or Asia Development Bank, major financial companies, they all say, no, you cannot do that. Uh, you, you, your situation is not well developed. So what uh, Park jong hee uh, did is recruit Korean scholars. We are so poor situation, but still many people went abroad, especially the United States, because the US provided scholarship. So they recruit engineers, scientists, and they form a special committee on heavy and chemical industry promotion committee, and they President Park uh, asked them to evaluate the possible you know, uh, plan for doing this kind of stuff. And uh, they you know, produced a result that we, we, we can try. You know? So that's why they did. But uh, to make a long story short, we borrow too much. Okay? And we invest too much. We create overcapacity. Over, overlapping, you know, like in terms of steel production, today the same situation. Already big players are producing steel. We are producing more steel, you create overcapacity. So we are in dilemma. We are in very poor situation. We borrow heavily and uh, overlapping investment, overcapacity, oversupply. So we are about to go bankruptcy, you know, because we cannot pay the interest payment to, to the bank. But Korea was so fortunate. Coming into uh, early, uh, uh, so early 80s, we are facing huge difficulties. And we print the money a lot. So we have inflation, overborrowing. You know, our you know, foreign exchange reserves are very poor. So we are about to go bankruptcy. But fortunately, from mid 1980s, US economy was booming again, okay? So US economy is booming means world economy is booming. Suddenly, those over-invested uh, area sectors, you know, overnight, they become an exporting sector because demand for these kind of heavy items are rising in the world economy. So we avoided possible bankruptcy and suddenly we are selling this good to the world, okay? That's why we become a number one shipbuilding, you know, Company now, China is following very closely, and then now we are making a steel. Postco Steel is uh, is, is founded at, at, during those time, and we are number one uh, competitive uh, steel makers. You know, machines and uh, electronics means semiconductors, and at that time we are not we didn't designate the automobile. Uh, we thought maybe shipbuilding is easier than uh, automobile, but anyway now we are selling automobile. So. That's why uh, many developing countries uh, saying, could you recommend developing countries to replicate you know, Korean development model? I said no. Uh, at least I cannot say yes. Because 
you know, this kind of thing is uh, planned and pursued by one a strong leader. But uh, our environment was for, so lucky for, for Korea. So I don't know whether your heavy investment uh, guaranteed by the government will become successful or not. Okay? If it's not successful, then you are in big trouble. Okay? So today, uh, textbook says, if you have a very lucrative, very nice uh, investment opportunities, then don't let the government uh, guarantee or borrow money for you. Visit the private uh, financial company and show and explain, we have a good project, why don't you uh, lend the money uh, for us? This is much more stable, much more, uh, much more safe kind of approach than uh, government is involving in this kind of huge project. Anyway, so those are the things. So in the 1980s, we start to uh, stabilize our economy by curbing the inflation. And then that's the time we start to liberalize. We, we didn't think about liberalization up until you know, uh, 80s, but uh, uh, mid 80s, uh, we uh, participate the Uruguay uh, not, We start to you know, part part participate the Uruguay round, and we joined the uh, OECD in 1996 by opening up our capital markets and also uh, if you go to the WTO, you have to declare yourself whether you are a developing country or not. But uh, Korea was considered a developing country. It's a self-declaration. 1989, many member countries of, of, of GATT says you are no longer a developing country. So we are challenged. We decide to graduate from developing country status. That doesn't mean that we are advanced countries, but uh, this is what happened. So up until 1990s, we just depend on multilateral trading system, never thought about, you know, FTA. But we heard the news in 1993, Mexico formed FTA with the United States and Canada. This is NAFTA. This is a problem of today. Trump is not, uh, they don't like, he, he doesn't like this, this kind of agreement. But anyway, we heard the news. Up until that time, as a scholar, I was working for some research organization. We didn't know whether Mexico is so important for Korea. Mexico is important to Korea because Mexico is uh, our competitor, our rivalry, where? In the US market. In Mexico and Korea, uh, in terms of economic development status, Korea is a little bit ahead, but very similar to each other. And they have a 75 million population, much bigger than Korea. If, uh, if Korea is united, very similar to each other. So cheap labor, huge land, lots of resources, very close to the United States. So you remember 1980s, 1990s, you know, almost 40% of our export is going to the United States. And we are severely competing with Mexican companies. And now Mexico, geographically close to the uh, United States, now they have FTA, that means no tariff. So we are scared, we are concerned. We have to do something. We cannot just you know, simply depend upon multilateral uh, uh, system. So we, we, we are thinking about, you know, and also the general public start to complain, what do you do? You know, Mexico is having FTA with the United States and Korea is doing nothing. So we are searching for countries. And Mexico said, no, we, we don't want to have FTA with you. So searching countries in the Latin American countries by some you know, simulation, you know, all kinds of things. We end up choosing Chile. So Korea-Chile FTA is the first FTA Korea had. But in choosing Chile, it was not systematically planned. Okay? It is kind of immediate response to the fact that the Mexico had FTA with the, with the United States. So we feel sorry to uh, Chile, because Chile is chosen by accident or whatever. But uh, anyway, it creates huge also problem too, because Mexico, I mean, Chile was exporting, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, the pork, meat, and also fruits, especially the, the grapes. Lots of resistance from, uh, from Korean farming uh, community. But anyway, it was uh, implemented in 2004. And then the president, uh, uh, No Mui Hun, he became a president in 2003, somehow got a lot of recommendation. We have to have multiple FTAs, 
but we don't have any plan. So for the first time uh, in our history, 2003, Nomuyan government draw a roadmap, plan. You know, we want to pursue FTAs more systematically. And they, they you know, define some criteria. Okay? So uh, mostly the prior, pri pri priorities are given to large advanced countries like the United States and EU and also large developing countries like uh, China or ASEAN or India, you know, th those kind of things. So we have a plan. And Japan also included too. So we, we try that, uh, uh, you know, we try to implement uh, based on that kind of plan. That's what uh, we have been doing so far. And right now, knowing that the FTA is very important, we are now taking so-called multi-track approaches. WTO activities, we are actively participating, but WTO is not going anywhere these days. And then RTAs, FTAs, so multilateral, regional, and also bilateral. We are participating in all kinds of uh, trade policy uh, activities. Okay, uh, right now we have 15 FTAs, including Korea US, Korea EU, Korea India, Korea, you know, China, but uh, you know, EU is 28 countries, ASEAN 10 countries, so we have 15 FTAs, but if you count the countries which are involved in uh, FTAs with Korea is 52 countries. And then, you know, you remember Korea's GDP, out of world GDP is 1.8%. If we combine 52 partners' GDP together, total GDP of our partners is increased to 73.2%. 73 Some governments, uh, including Lee Myung-bak government, they call this our uh, economic territory. Um, our economic territory you know, is, is expanded. But I don't like to use the economic territory. Our partner is getting bigger. And uh, most you know, FTA partners one country has in the world is, is Chile, 95% their partners, and then Peru, and then Korea is number third. So Korea become the country which has huge FTA network uh, by, by, by now. And right now we have a FTA negotiation with uh, Indonesia, and then uh, CJK, so -called, we, we call CJK, which means China, Japan, Korea, trilateral FTAs, which I also launched in 2012. Do you think it is moving well or not? It's not at all. Because, you know, Korea, Chi Korea China, Korea, uh, Korea, Japan, China, Japan, they are not you know, doing well these days. So it's, it's started, it's moving nowhere. Hmm? And then we call RCEP, uh, Regional you know, Comprehensive Economic Partnership, which was created in response to a TPP, 16 countries, which is ASEAN, 10, and then CJK, Australia, New Zealand, and India were there. I also participated in launching this RCEP, but uh, it is also moving very, very slowly. Even though China said, we want to show leadership, it doesn't show any leadership. I mean, just sit there. Who is uh, leading? ASEAN. ASEAN is very slow, as you know. So we are not expecting much out of RCEP either. And uh, what about the... Uh, FTA, major FTA Korea is considering. I told you maybe Korea Mercosur. I didn't say that, but maybe in the future we want to do it. And we also, all, we also, also want to do FTA with uh, 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 Eurasia, uh, Europe and uh, uh, Eurasia means Europe, I mean, uh, Russia and uh, uh, East Asian, you know, those middle, middle uh, what called Central Asia those kind of things we are also considering. But also people thinking that you know, maybe Japan succeed in implementing TPP-11, except the United States. That's what Japan is you know, trying to do. And I think sometime next year, maybe this will start, but TPP-11 is not very impressive because it is without United States. But in any case, Korea may consider joining the TPP-11 also in the future. Okay, these are the, our network. The green ones are uh, our FTA's uh, partners, uh, which are actually imp in implementation. And uh, pretty, pretty impressive, right? 15 FTA's all over the world. So, 
If I summarize uh, implications of Korea's FTA network, first of all, Korea is a unique country that has FTAs with both major advanced countries like the United States and EU and large emerging countries, China, ASEAN, India, and Turkey too. So we have a very unique countries. And um, I already told you, you know, 73.2% uh, of global GDP is our partner's GDP. And um, so what is, what, what, why, why this is important to Korean economy? And for me, who are specializing in uh, international trade and international trade policy and FTAs, this is very important. Becoming an, uh, I'm sorry, excellent opportunity. This kind of FTA, huh? uh, this kind of uh, uh, FTA, this kind of FTA uh, network is very important uh, in Korean economy because think about who will create jobs in the future in the, in the Korean economy. You know, ordinary good quality jobs like college graduates. Who will create new jobs? Not Samsung, not LG anymore. They are assembling all the products outside Korea. So inside Korea what they are doing is running the research and development center, innovation center. They're only recruiting people who have PhD degrees and you know, some kind of uh, engineer uh, degrees, uh, very high level degrees. So plain jobs they don't create. But in terms of number uh, of the companies in Korea, more than 90% of the companies are small and medium sized companies. But um, they are not creating uh, good uh, uh, jobs for young people because they are only doing domestic uh, activities or helping, you know, the large con uh, conglomerates. So we are suggesting strongly these small and medium-sized companies can become global companies. What do you mean by global? You are, you are making some goods and export to the world. You, you will be part of the global chain, even the small one, okay? Then uh, you need, uh, you know, if that company succeed in terms of, you know, selling things in the, in the, in the global market, you have to ha hire some young people who, who can speak uh, foreign languages and who has some marketing, you know, uh, courses, you know. So they create uh, nice jobs. Let's say, you know, each company create five more jobs. But we have a huge number of uh, SMEs in Korea, which are you know, do mostly uh, in the domestic market. So we encourage small and medium-sized companies. I met the CEOs of small and medium companies right after Korea US FTA started to be implemented in Busan. I went to Busan and I gathered with a small uh, number of uh, business people. But they said that, you know, okay, Korea F US FTA is good, but it's only for uh, big, com big companies because we don't have anybody who speak English, who, we don't have anybody who can make a, a brochure or pamphlet in foreign languages. We don't know the, the market uh, situation or how, how much demand is there in the, in the overseas market. We don't, know, we don't have anything, but we are making very good stuff. Then what do we do? We can help, uh, government can help developing, I mean, the small and medium-sized companies. Korea uh, International Trade Association they have a nice system to help uh, small and medium-sized companies. They help, uh, you know, fulfilling the documents of uh, origin. They send, you know, English-speaking you know, speaking people to make uh, pamphlets. They, sh they uh, gather information of the uh, overseas market. So we are helping really seriously uh, uh, small and medium-sized companies so that they can become global companies. In that way, each company can gradually increase the employment opportunity for young people. So this is what uh, really we, we means trade experts are really hoping to uh, promote. And uh, one more thing is this. We have uh, 15 FTAs covering all over the world. That means we can become a foreign investment hub. In other words, we advertise to European companies, German companies, for example. They are exporting to uh, China. Why don't you come to Korea and, and establish some kind of production base or even R&D center? Then you make something and sell to uh, China using, hopefully, Korea-China FTA. Then you can lower the tariff. 
you can save the transportation cost. Isn't that nice? You know, you can come here. So Korea, wage is too high, you know, and lots of uh, labor demonstration. We don't want to go there. But if you show 73.2% of the world GDP is connected uh, with us, then maybe they will have a different mind, okay? And also, Korea has nice, you know, IT sectors. We have a much better legal system in terms of protecting intellectual property rights compared to other developing countries. So we can be an attractive factor if you introduce our FTA networks. Foreign companies come. Right away, they want to uh, hire some local employees. Whom, whom they, who, who they want to hire? College graduates. Especially uh, those people are graduating from international studies or something like that. So they can create decent jobs for young people. Government, current government is trying to create jobs in the government sector. This is okay too. But the more attractive jobs should be created by what? Private companies and especially small and medium-sized companies and also foreign companies who, who come to Korea. That's our hope so that they can use our FTA network. So finally, this is just a you know, list of the uh, future uh, 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 homework for our policymakers. First one, you know, right now protectionism is rising. I don't want to explain this to you. you know. They are shooting to each other, you know, anti-dumping duties, all kinds of things. So we have to do something. And then going to the WTO, but WTO is not working <laughs> properly anymore. But and also here, uh, we have to join the efforts in terms of uh, revitalizing the multilateral trading system. Doha round, you, ha you heard you know, the, the, the negotiation, major negotiation, which was started in 2001. We are supposed to end this negotiation by 2004. 16 years later, we don't, you don't, you don't conclude anything, and also even worse, we don't have any hint how to conclude uh, the, you know, the uh, Doha round because we have a confrontation between China, Brazil, India versus EU, United States. U.S. lost the appetite of multilateral trading system. We are in big, big crisis. I can spend another hour to talk about this kind of world trading environment, but this is very, very important. Uh, Korea really think that the multilateral trading system is very important to Korea, which is a small country. You know, you know the uh, Korea-China relations these days, uh, because of THAAD, you know, China is hassling some Korean business things. We can go back to WTO and discuss this kind of matter. Then we can protect against big players. But now, multilateral system is drifting without any clear vision. And then CJK, RCEP, uh, I don't think uh, we have a good success, but Korea can play some role. And then also engage in the uh, so-called amendment negotiation of Korea US FTA, which is also very sensitive. Uh, if this uh, you know, FTA is uh, negotiation result is open, then maybe uh, Korean people may say that this is unfair then politically it can be a huge problem, not only in the United States, but also in Korea. So it's a very, very sensitive one, but we don't know how we can conclude. And uh, maximizing the uh, utilization of the existing FTAs, I already told you. And then um, we have to make uh, consumers feel that, oh, we have a benefits out of FTAs. We have huge FTAs, but not many consumers are really uh, liking the, you know, the result because still we have a very complicated distribution systems. So wine is imported without tariff from Chile. Maybe one, uh, $10, but you know, final price consumers are paying is almost $30. Why is that so? Because there are so many layers in the distribution sector which is taking the you know, profit out of the process. The consumers are ending up paying huge money, then say, what's for this FTA? So we have to do some domestic reform. The lastly, uh, trade liberalization these days are viewed very negatively by even general public. That's why shrewd politicians like Trump use that kind of people so that they won the election. Brexit decision, they never thought, of, thought about this kind of possible outcome, but general public was you know, led by politicians 
and saying against globalization, against market liberalization. So I think uh, we should do something. We means government, uh, government uh, policy makers should provide some so-called inclusive policies. We can help losers, so-called losers. This losers means unemployed people. If you look at studies, main reason for unemployment is technology development, not trade, not immigration. But still, they don't like uh, you know, free trade, they don't like globalization, so we have to still help those losers, if, especially the young losers. We have to take them to the futuristic sector okay, by helping them, giving them education, training. Without that, you cannot get the support from general public about you know, FTAs, you know, they don't care. Then, uh, you know, in terms of economic, uh, uh, you know, kind of aspect, we are losing a lot of efficiencies. We are losing a lot of uh, uh, competition and things like that. So it's bad. So we have to do something for those people who are negatively affected by international trade. I'll stop here. I, I think I spent too much time. Okay. According to the instruction by Dr. Ryu, I have to come down to the floor. <laughs> we open the floor for uh, discussions. Okay. Okay, I, I spent too much time in my lecture. Yes. Um, 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 thank you for your presentation. Um, it was really interesting. I would like to know why do you think that um, such a thing like the miracle of the Han River never really took place in North Korea? Okay, I can collect one question and another another question. This gentleman. Mm. Okay, uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, you talked about Korea's FTA with the European Union, um, and obviously you've got uh, the Brexit decision that's affected that. Uh, could you see Korea um, agreeing a sort of similar FTA with, with the UK post-Brexit when the UK leaves the European Union? Mm -hmm. Okay, the first question, um, we can do the same thing in uh, North Korea. It depends on the North Korean leadership. Uh, we don't, you know, actually, to be very frank, we don't, ha we don't want to have an overnight unification. It can create a huge chaotic situation. So I hope uh, North Korea open. We suggest through some third party, why don't you join the WTO? then you can increase a lot of credibility or transparency of your, your, your country. You can join the ADB membership, you can join the World Bank membership. Then those people, if you don't like uh, direct help from South Korea, you go to the international organizations. Then you can build up the infrastructure, you can build up some, we, we know the Kaesong, you know, industrial complex, we try some uh, experiment. You can do the same thing all over the you know, North Korean places. Then gradually they increase their income. Then our unification cost, if it ever happened, will be reduced. So we really want to uh, suggest to North Korea, you give up the nuclear things, and then you should make economic development. And in terms of wages, cheapest uh, wages in the world. So if, you, if this North Korean laborers know that the wage level outside, especially in, in Korea, and Korean company want to exploit that, it can, you know, face huge resist resistance. So maybe gradually you open up your economy by the help of, you know, uh, international organization, but actual company who can help is Korean companies. So together with international organization, our Korean company go into North Korea, then we can make really another miracle of, you know, Pyongyang or whatever, you know, <laughs> we can do that. And your question is, uh, right after the Brexit decision, we already, both government, start to discuss this, because UK and Korea is very close in terms of trading activities. But uh, we have some procedures. And uh, EU also want to have some adjustment after Brexit is really happened. And then uh, we want to start uh, negotiating with uh, uh, UK for our separate uh, negotiation, maybe similar level of EU-Korea FTA in the future. Okay, some more questions, yes. Hello, um, thanks mm. for your um, comprehensive presentation on Korean trade. Um, it is known that historically in current day, 
that the Korean government maintains a very close relationship and ties with um, uh, with its con big conglomerates like Hyundai and Samsung. So I want to know specifically what is being done to combat that this tendency and uh, promote and integrate these small and medium-sized companies into the world market mm. and trade. Your question is very important question. One more question, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My question is about the, for example, right now in the world, the tariffs are almost abolished around the world. Mm. I mean, th there's a lot of FTAs that abolish mm. the tariffs, mm. but we we have seen that the that the problem right now to trade is the non-tariffs uh, barriers that are that are causing that. The trade is, is blocked. So, my my question is about your opinion about the non-tariff uh, barriers. Thank okay. you. Okay, very relevant question too. Your question um, about the relationship between uh, conglomerates and government. If you go back to 1970s, it got to be you know related because company have no money, you cannot borrow money. Then government should guarantee the law for even foreign loans. Okay. So at that time, we create a nice wording of that kind of relationship. For the poor country, you don't have any choice. This is the only choice you can do. So-called risk sharing by government, companies, and financial institutions. That kind of you know, trilateral uh, relationship was developed in Japan first. We learned that. China is on the same thing, right? So if you look at the East Asian countries, Korea, Japan, China, one common characteristic is very retarded financial service sector. Because you don't have to improve your sector. You only receive the phone call from the government. Government say, you give this money to this company. Okay? In the case of Korea, in the 60s and 70s, you know, in the 70s and early 80s, the market rate is like a 20%. If you borrow from the non-market rate, the curve rate, outside the system, you have to borrow 20 or 30 percent interest rate. If you borrow from the bank, 6 percent or 5 percent. So you're borrowing money is a big deal, right? So if you have that kind of incentive, what do you want to do? You have to help the friend, you know, your, your friend at the government, right? So we have a very close ties. It, it become later corruption, you know, those kind of things. You can see these days even the vice chairman of Samsung is now in jail. It's you know, very pity to, you know, to, to see this kind of thing. So trans, uh, competition policy, per se, and transparency, deregulation, should be the key you know, to uh, uh, remove this kind of situation. I think uh, uh, through this kind of investigation and this kind of uh, period, our environment will be become much more transparent and clean. I hope so. I hope so that way. Right? And you apply right tax system. Right? for inheritance tax, whatever, very fair tax system, and open up so that you don't have you know, any, any, anything you know, to worry about the corruption. You have to compete with the international companies. Then there's no room for corruption. But uh, protection means lots of you know, profits there, rents are there. So they, are take, they want to take these rents. With whom? By whom? Bribing the government officials. That's the typical pattern. Okay? But uh, we have to get rid of this. So market opening is very important, that you can enhance competition. You are non-tariff barriers, this is really a headache. Uh, and uh, as you see, you know, through many, many rounds of uh, trade negotiations, virtually there's no tariff, 2%, uh, 3%, especially in the advanced countries. But non-tariff barriers means once you import, and then distribution is very, very uh, complicated. And, uh, some you know, companies, I, cannot, I don't want to name the country, but some, some countries, private sector, you retired from companies, big companies, you are old enough, but uh, you create another companies which are producing parts of the companies, parts of the, you know, some, some machines or automobile, and then ask the main uh, companies, hey, you should use only my, my parts, not other parts. So it's a private deal. Only thing is your competition policy should solve the problem, but not trade policy, because it's not the government. Trade policy only dealing with government measures, okay? So that kind of thing you can handle. So um, 
I think you know this is a big you know issues, but uh, for the sake of your own people, own consumers' welfare, government should apply more aggressively on competition policy to get rid of this non-tariff barriers because non-tariff barriers usually they seek for premiums and rents, which means corruption should be involved. But uh, it's not the government behavior. So that's the problem. So each government, so these days, because Doha round is not moving ahead, many scholars and experts are suggesting we should discuss about more non-tariff barriers, especially regulations. Okay, we have to have a ma much more transparent regulations. That's uh, part of the non-tariff uh, barrier discussion. Okay. Some other question? Thank yeah. you so much for your presentation. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the FTA between Korea, China, and Japan. Mm -hmm. So considering the political situation right now and the struggles that both Korea, China, and Korea, Japan relations face, do you think that will happen in the few next years, let's say like maybe 10 years or less than, less than 10 years? What do you think? Would it really become possible? It is easy to do, actually, because, you know, we can just, we have a model, and we have a nice, you know, comprehensive uh, so-called uh, prototype, you know, the agreements. Only thing is, you know, what do you do about the schedule of your market liberalization? You can easily do. And Korea, China already have some <coughs> setting. But uh, it's not the political things. The China is afraid of Japanese advanced companies. They don't want to open up. But they want to say, oh, because of political situation, we don't want to really do it. And to some extent, Korean companies, if you survey the Korean uh, industries, 90% of the industries say we are afraid of uh, Japanese uh, uh, you know, companies. So government uh, should uh, you know, pursue actual negotiations. You listen to the, you know, the company. Companies never say, okay, we want to have FTA. Never say that, okay? So we have to do it, but maybe a little bit lower level than Korea US FTA, but 85% or, 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 or 90%. Then we give some time schedule to be prepared. We open up to Japanese companies. I will give you 10 years. Then among companies, some companies start to work to respond to the you know, possible uh, invasion of uh, uh, Japanese uh, uh, products. But uh, you, know, you, you exclude my sector out of Korea, China, uh, you know, Japan deal, then you become pla complacent. You don't have to do anything. But that's, that's, not, that's not good. You have to introduce competition, but give some time schedule. Then they can be prepared. But uh, because of you know, political situation, I don't see any any, any kind of outcome to be made soon. You know, it can take a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for. Okay, I'll be quick. Uh, thank you for thank you for your speech. Um, um, so, uh, Russia. Uh, it was a Russian uh, intention that uh, they want to uh, cooperate with the two Koreas to construct the uh, Trans Korea Railroad. Uh, but uh, recently, there that doesn't seem to be any progress on the project. So I, I would like to ask, if uh, how likely that the pro that the project will be uh, complete in the future? You mean uh, Chance uh, Korea Railroad? Ch China Korea? I uh, know. I mean Chance Chance ah, Korea. Trans -Korea. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a simple answer because of uh, North Korea. Yeah, but because if you you know receive the oil or kind of energy through North Korea by building some pipelines, for example. Yeah. We don't trust North Korea. If they close the pipeline, then we cannot have a you know, stable supply of energies. This will be a nice kind of project. If North Korea land the, the, the area for these pipelines and get some you know, profits out of these businesses, then using this money, don't use this money for nuclear you know, weapons, but use for industrialization, helping North Korean people, much nice. But uh, even Russia, they are supportive and sympathetic to North Korea. But for this project, they are reluctant because you know, it's, it's not uh, certain. Uh, we still have a lot of uncertainty involved, okay? Another Thank question? You. This is the last one. 
because we go back to the <laughs> to the back side. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Uh, my question is about, well, Korean companies in future and their position, but basically Korea and Korean companies, and they got very famous around the world because of the Korean waves. Uh, and already, well, we can see Korean companies all over the world, but then what is a little bit interesting is that Korean companies' position is a little bit weak. Uh, we don't know, like, around the world, like, Korean companies sometimes are considered as high-end and sometimes considered as low-end products. Uh, well, Chinese products, well, we know that low quality and cheap, and Japanese products are high quality and a little bit more expensive, but Korean products are somehow in the middle. Uh, what do you think that the Korean companies are pursuing in future as their position in the world? I think uh, we have to you know, aim at the uh, high level uh, brand and high level quality. If you compete for mid middle level or low level qualities, you will be soon caught up by China and other ASEAN countries. We keep running a little bit faster than other countries. So using Korean wave, this is a good opportunity for Korean companies, but you know, only for specific items. You can actually go up to the advanced level because people trust, people like this brand. Okay, this is a really good niche market. Korean companies are doing it, but uh, in that, even in that case, you have to make the best quality items. If they realize they are selling this because of Korean wave, but in fact the quality is not very good, then you lose uh, credibility right away. Okay? So maybe you know, big conglomerates of Korea is doing pretty good in terms of providing the best items uh, to even developing country markets. Okay, I will, uh, I will stop here. And, uh, I really enjoyed your discussions, and uh, I hope uh, you have a very, very nice time at Korea University. Okay? Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah.